we're, we're working really, really hard at Denim Social to, to reframe the narrative around why social media matters, right? And to your point, Haley, social media is a great business development tool if used properly. And what we're learning, and we now have about 250 different financial institutions on our platform now, what we're learning is this really matters. It leads to net new business outcomes. But most loan officers, wealth advisors, insurance agents, et cetera, are ill-equipped to be able to manage this on their own. They need the help of marketing, and they need compliance oversight to make sure they didn't do the wrong thing. And that's why they turn to us to be able to manage this all under one roof, right? And so when, when we think about a robust social selling program, we think about arming those customer-facing producers with the tools they need to be actually use social media to build better, deeper, more meaningful relationships with their communities that they serve. I love that. Sure. Well, the one thing I will also say is that, like, we've got two, we, we talk a lot at, inside our four walls at Denim about sort of the social media maturity curve, right? And we're building products and solutions to really meet our customers where they are. Mm -hmm. I'd put these guys at, like, the outer boundary of, <laughs> like where right. they are at with their social media maturity, mm -hmm. right? So you've got like two top tier experts. If you think about the vast majority of your loan pop your, your loan officer population, some of them aren't on social. Right. Some of them are nervous mm -hmm. to be on social. Um, some of them, frankly, are just never gonna do it unless you've got the tools in place, right? And so when we think about compliance and how do you scale a program that empowers the top social media mavens, right? Yeah. But also brings the rest of them into the fold. You have to have compliance come along for the ride because scale means more exposure, mm -hmm. not just for your brand and your reputation, but also, I mean, the fines are meaningful, right? And so within our platform, the way we think about compliance is all about proactive compliance. So if you're going to put something out in the public domain on social media, that post should be in some form or fashion rubber stamped by marketing and rubber stamped by compliance. And they use our platform to be able to do that, to say, okay, I'm gonna create a post through Denim, I'm gonna run it through these workflows so that marketing can get eyeballs on it, that I can get compliance that can have eyeballs on it, not necessarily slowing down the process, because mm -hmm. it's as easy to do as clicking on an approve button on your phone, right? But getting that all kind of wrapped into the DNA of how you manage social at scale, right, um, is really where we're, we're focused. So giving marketing the ability to say, hey, we're gonna present you with a bunch of pre-approved content, Mm -hmm. Right, we're going to give you the ability to use that content, modify it, personalize it, make it your own. It's going to run back through a compliance protocol, and then it gets posted. But then, of course, we're always going to archive it in perpetuity afterwards. As well. Again, I think it all just comes down to like we've got two experts who have really taken the bull by the horns, and they own their social presence. And we have to remember that most folks mm -hmm. aren't there yet. Right. Right. And so, one of the biggest challenges that when we start engaging with a new customer, we talk to them and say, "What? What are you allowing?" Mm -hmm. your loan officers to do on social media are you and they're like oh no we don't let them we don't let them be on social media right well tell us why that is mm -hmm. well we're terrified of compliance we're also terrified of how do we supply them with content mm -hmm. right so for those folks that aren't comfortable videoing and documenting mm -hmm. their day and all that like how can we supply them with content and so one of the biggest like barriers i would i would say for the c-suites is to say no no we, we're not talking about creating a million social media mavens. What we're talking about is, let's take step one, right? I talked about that social media maturity curve, right? If you're at level zero, don't worry about four. Let's get to one, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Let's, let's, let's find content, let's curate content that's third-party content that's credible, that comes from media platforms like Housing Wire, right? that's talking about important industry issues. Let's bring, build that into editorial schedules. Let's publish that content on behalf of our loan officers so they actually start to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And then what we very quickly find is that once we start to get that hamster wheel moving a little bit and the flywheel starting to go, then you start to see other folks pick their head up. Oh, then I want to do that and, right? I want to do that and I want to take a picture of the first time home buyer dangling the keys at the front porch, right? And so you start to get that hamster wheel moving and then they use our data and our analytics platform to say, okay, what's working? What's not working? How do we reinform an editorial schedule so that it actually drives results? I, I would say one of the things we're coaching a lot of our customers on, or especially who are just kind of taking that first step, mm -hmm. is focus on consistency. Focus on the right metrics, to your point. Like, it, mm -hmm. social is one of those things that takes time, mm -hmm. and you have to be committed to it. And so we get the question, obviously, as a technology provider, well, what's the ROI? I'm like, <laughs> well, what are you willing to commit <laughs> right. over the long haul to actually help your folks build a brand, right? And so. There's a commitment tied to this, um, and so the, the things I would, I would encourage folks to think about is meet your loan officers where they are 
empower them with tools, get the hamster wheel moving, right? And if you commit to it, you're gonna see success. And it doesn't have to be every loan officer either. Like mm -hmm. when we first start working with a, with a lender or a, you know, a insurance carrier, et cetera, we might say, hey, you might have 2,000 lenders out in the field. Let's find 200 because it's manageable, it's less scary. Let's start there and we can always grow a program over time.